Okay, so uh, let's start again uh, with where we had left. So if you remember, uh, the last thing that we were doing here, the last thing that I had explained you in this pseudocode guide uh, was the usage of repeat until loop repeat and, until. The, and the while loop. Yes. So now we are going to study the last topic related to uh, the pseudocode and that is the declaration and usage of arrays. See, previously also, uh, I have told you that how do we declare arrays? Do you remember this? Uh, yeah, I can do a little bit. Okay, so actually that, that's how you declare an array. And if you remember, I also told you uh, that in IGPSC computer science, we only have one dimensional array. Okay, but uh, yeah, whereas yeah. In, yes, whereas in AS and A levels, we do have two dimensional array. But so dealing with one dimensional array is a very easy thing. Previously, mm. you have also seen how do we use arrays in Python, and you know that uh, what do we call arrays in Python? The technical name is we call them lists. List, yes. So I am going to uh, use this same same declaration method. Basically, I am copying it here from here, and I am going to paste yeah. it here. Okay, so. After this, let's start the last topic that is arrays. Okay. Okay, so the first thing is definitely I have to declare it. So I have directly uh, pasted that statement here. Since I am declaring a one dimensional array, so I'm going to write declare. Then what was the format? I'm going to write the name of the array. Uh, the name mm -hmm. is like you define the name of a variable. So the name of this array is what? It's num. Then you're going right. to put a colon. After that, you're going to write array, which means that this num is actually an array having memory locations. And what do we call these memory locations? Remember? Uh, no, I, I don't remember what they're it's called. called index. Oh, yes. Yes, okay. now I remember. It's index. called index. Yeah. So 1 to 10 of what? Of integer. Okay. Now, what do right. you mean by these memory locations? Let me show it to you in the presentation also. Just give me a minute. Okay. So you already okay. know what arrays are. Uh, yes. Now, this index thing is this. Now, when you write, let's say, 0 to 4 or 1 to 5, so actually these are the memory locations which are called as the indexes or indices. Okay, so this means that if you're going to yeah. store a number at location 1, that will actually be stored here, where you can see a number 1 is written at the bottom. Let's say yeah. you're storing a number at location 3, so that will be stored here. So in reality, hmm. what happens, a number of memory locations, the locations that you define while declaring uh, an array, these locations are assigned to the array. So that is how, uh, or, or you can say that is what is happening in the background in, in the memory. Clear? Got it. Yeah. So I told you that uh, both methods are there. In Python, definitely the default uh, starting point is zero. So here also, the pseudo code also, I think you can, uh, uh, call the first uh, index as uh, zero, or you can start with one also. Definitely, if you're going to start with one, so the things will be more easier for you. Okay, now let's get back, and now I'm going to show you how do we declare uh, store data in an array. Okay, so I'm done with the declaration. Now remember, there are few things I have told you this earlier also, and again I am repeating that there are few things that are always related with loops. Now, which loop is it? Definitely you can use a repeat until loop. You can use a while loop. You can use a for loop. But uh, so what are these things? Number one, like when you are doing the totaling, when you are doing the counting, you use a loop. Similarly, when you are dealing with an array, again, you use a loop. But which type of loop is it? Mostly with arrays, the loop that we are going to use will be a for loop. Now, can you tell me what is the reason that we uh, use a for loop with arrays? Um, because we know the amount of times it's going to run the fixed amount of times. Exactly. 
So when you declare an array, you know how many locations are there. So definitely, when you know how many times you have to repeat something, so that is the case. That is the scenario of a for loop. Uh, now let me complete it. Right. So what I'm going to do here is let's say this is one to ten. So I'm going to start a loop for this. I'm going to write for then. After this, I'm going to use a variable that can be anything. Let's say I'm calling it a counter. For counter is equals to one to ten. Okay, now why am I writing ten uh, here? Because you can see that exactly these are the memory locations which are here. Now let's say if you are any de defining the initial location as zero and you are taking it till nine. In this case, this will also be zero to nine. This is something that you need to take care of. Okay, clear? Yeah. Okay, so but in order to make it easier, I am making it one to ten, and so I am running my loop from one to ten. Ten. Okay. You right. know where we end the for loop, so I am going to write next and what else? Um, for for the for loop, it's going to be next, and then you're just going to. That's it. I think that's when it finishes. That's when the for loop finishes with next. Uh no, I told you that although even if you are going to write next, that is acceptable, but it's a good thing to write the name of this variable also. So for counter, so here you are going to write next count. Okay, it's a good thing. Yeah. Now after this, I I want to show you that how you are going to take an input from the user and you're going to store it, uh, inside this variable. So the first thing that you're going to do here is you're going to write output. In the output, you're going to write enter a number. You are instructing the user to enter a number. Then the same way using which you take the input from the user and you store it in a variable, you are going to use the same way, the same method to enter and to store the data inside an array. So you are going to write in the input command again. And hmm. along with that, you are going to write the name of the array, which is num. Now, in the brackets here, remember it's very important to use a square bracket here. You cannot use uh, the round or the curly brackets here. And here, basically, this is what here you are going to define the locations into which uh, you are going to store the data. Now, let me draw something for you, and then I'm going to explain it. See, let's say when I'm saying one to ten. So actually, there are different memory locations. Let's say this is one, mm. then this is two, then this is three, and definitely so on. So let's say I want to store a number at location two. So here in the bracket where my cursor is blinking, I need to write num two, like this. Right. Now, if I'm going to take an input and store it at, let's say, if I'm going to write input num two. So that input will be stored where that is going in the second part this, of the list. This location, but definitely this right. means that I need to have a mechanism so that these numbers can change automatically. Which means hmm. I cannot write input a two because I need to store a number at location one also, two also, three also. Yeah, exactly. Also. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the variable of the for loop and I'm going to write counter like this. So what is going to happen? Okay. Initially, the first time when the loop is going to run, the value of counter will be one. Then it will be two. Then it will be three. Then it will be four. Then it will be five. Then it will be six. So basically, I have developed an automatic process, an automatic way of changing the locations inside this array. Are you getting me? Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for counter is equal to one to ten, output enter a number, and then in the brackets you are going to use the variable of the counter. Okay, that's it. Now let me also show you. Let's say you have uh, taken input of ten numbers from the user, and you have stored all of them in the array. Now the next last thing is that let's say I want to print a number stored at location seven. So how am I going to do that? Again, the method will be the same. I'm going to write uh, within the inverted commas. I'm going to write the seventh number is. I'm going to put a comma here. Then I'm going to write num, and in the brackets, what should I write? Um, you would write counter. No. Okay. Think, think then it about it again. Okay. So you declare the number, then you started the loop, and then you did output into a number. 
input num. I don't want counter. all the numbers to be printed. I only want number seven to be printed. What what should I do? Then you would say seven do? num seven. Exactly. Okay, this is one of the way. Now I'm going to show you another way using which uh, you can print all the numbers that you have stored uh, in the array. Now for this, I I need another loop. Now either mm. you can call it counter also, but if you want, you can call, make it this counter one. And the next counter as counter two. Although it's not necessary, you can repeat the name of the variable here. So I'm going to write for counter two is equals to one to ten. Now what I'm doing here, I want to print all the data stored in an array. So here I'm going to write output. And right. In the brackets, I'm going to write the number is. Let's say the stored number is. I'm going to put a comma here, and here yeah. now this time when I want to print all the numbers, now here I'm going to write the name of the variable which is counter two. Sorry, which is counter mm -hmm. three. Yes. And next counter two. So now tell me, is it clear why uh, I have written the name of the variable here? Mm, it's still a little confusing to me. Uh, is it because like you wanted to be looping ten times? That's why. Yes. See, I am doing the same thing that I, what I what I have done to input ten numbers to store ten numbers into the array. I am using the same method, the same technique to print all the numbers stored in the array. Now, oh, when you okay. write num seven, that is only going to print the seventh number which has been stored into the array. But see this. Second counter, this second loop is going to run how many times? Uh, ten times, ten as times. well. So this means each time the this value of counter two will be changing from one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So when it will hmm. be the when the value of counter two will be one, so the first number that you have taken input here that you have stored here, that will be printed on the screen. Right, right, right. When it will be two, the second number that you have taken input here and stored it into the array, that number will be printed. When the value of counter will be three, the third number will be uh, printed. Printed. So like I have developed an automatic mechanism to store ten numbers into the counter. So again, I am taking help of a loop, a for loop, to print all the numbers stored in the uh, array. Now, is it clear or not? Yeah, yeah, no, it's not sure. Sure, no, I understand. Yeah, and let's say if you want to print a particular number for that, you're going to uh, write a statement like this. I hope this is clear now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, it is. So yes, yep. so I I taught you both the things: how to take an input and store it into an array, and how to uh, print all the values which have been stored into an array. Okay. Uh, now after this again, I want you to share your Python folder again, and let's see what is the program uh, that we had designed in Python. We are going to try uh, try to write the same program in Sudoku. Yes, share your folder with me again. Okay. Okay. Let me share it. Yes, show me your Python folder. Okay, what what was the first program? Yes, twenty three. Open program number twenty three. So this was the program that we had made uh, in uh, in Python. Yeah. Okay, so this is doing what? Okay, this is this here. The data is already stored uh, in the array. Uh, you are simply printing the data present at a particular location. It's very simple. Are you getting me? Uh, yeah. Okay, so leave this one. I want you to move on to the next one. Twenty-three, twenty-four. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh. Okay, here what you are doing is you are taking numbers from the user and you are storing him uh, storing these numbers inside the list of numbers. So actually, mm. this is the same program that I have 
uh, written on uh, on my uh, word document it's the same thing can you compare both these uh, programs the ones that i have i yeah. have written in uh, sudo code and this is a equivalent program in python now close this one also okay uh, that's it okay there isn't any other program uh, okay no then first i want you to write uh, program number 23 yes this one okay let me let me change the code for program number 24 let me change the code for okay. program number 24 i want you to write sudo code uh, where you are going to take names of five students from the user and you are going to store them in the array and after that you are going to ask the user which means that the user is going to input that name stored at which location uh, has to be printed so the user is going to decide that the name stored on which location has to be printed got it so that that is for the 24 right not 23 uh yes you can say that but yes that is 20 24 yes okay got it the only difference is in python code 23 you are taking numbers as an input now i have asked you to take names as an input yeah okay create a new word file uh do you want me to uh repeat the question uh well first i'm doing 23 right i'm doing this one okay do it first okay Okay um can can I just review your code one time just yeah sure can uh, you stop sharing your screen yep i'm not sharing so so this is like the entire code right yes <clears throat> okay mm. Okay, I, I think I think I got it. Okay. okay. So I have to create an array. Okay. now you need to do this without looking at the python code okay so first i'll declare it so i'll just take five should i take five names uh yeah i think it is five in, in yes, python yes for program well. number 23 you need to do the same thing that you have done in python but in yeah. pseudo code yeah so instead of integer i'll write string here because it's alphabet yes exactly okay so wait so now i have to so how do how do i like set do i like name it like this like in python here like yes see uh, let me repeat this again there are two things either you are already storing uh, you are defining the data that will be stored in the array or you are going to take an input from the user and then you are going to store it in the array these are Got two it. different things yes definitely if you are by default if you are going to store the data in the array and you are not going to take it as an input from the user yes then what you are doing is correct right okay so the after name this array now so this so, array uh, after bilal is... there i can see a comma which shouldn't be there oh yeah yeah you're right <coughs> and remember this n has to be small because in the first statement you have written oh, yeah. names with a small n so to cap yeah 
right? So now I have to, if I'm not wrong, I have to print each and every variable. No. Or no. do I have to find the location? I no, open your location. Python code again. Open your Python code. Uh, yeah, I think I remember. Okay. It's to find the location. Yep, location. <clears throat> See, you need to ask the user about the location. And then you are going to print that data at this location is this. Got it. So I'm going to call this counter one. No, Adam, that's incorrect. Open your Python what, code what again. Open your Python code again. Yes. Yeah, but I can't do this part in yes. the code, can I? Okay, so, so why haven't you used a loop here in Python? And why are you using that a loop in pseudocode? Oh yeah, because we're just we're just showing one. We're just showing one name, yes, not simply. all. Yes, uh, here yeah, since right, you right. you need to print only one name, so you know not yeah. going to use a, uh, a loop. Let's say if the requirement of the question is that the user has uh, is to given an opportunity to enter five names only in that case, uh, or five locations only in that case, you need to use a for loop. Here you are not going to use a for loop. Right. So enter location of desired. Or you can write enter a location, anything you want. Yeah. Okay. Then I will. And this the statement location. will not be indent. Oh, yeah, because it's not loop anymore. Got to do that. So input location. Um, after this. Okay, so now we need to look for it. So if they've inputted it, is it going to be like this? Um, wait, sorry. Names, like how it is in Python, like this. Okay, write it. Like names, and then here it says location. Like, like I have to write the output statement, but yes, exactly. Yes, yes, you are right. Okay, got it. So output the location. number okay like that uh the location number is uh location the location let's say if it's seven so the seven number is names this is an incorrect uh, English statement. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I didn't think about that. Oh, you can only simply write the name is and then the name. That's it. The user already knows the location. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's fine then, I guess. Uh, yes, it's fine now. So you're done with it. Now move on. Uh, so this is a question where you are simply. 
finding the location. The data is stored in an array, but remember, in this question, you were not taking an input from the user. Now, so this yeah. was program number twenty-three. Have you saved it in your yeah. computer? Uh, I'm going to save it in the end. I have like two or three as well along with okay. this. Okay. Now this will be program number 24. Okay. Here you are taking and storing numbers into the list. And now I want you to store names. Uh, uh, you, I want you to take string data from the, uh, as an input from the user and store them in an array. So numbers and the rest is the same, right? Yes, exactly. So will I use this statement? This numbers append? Uh, definitely not. This is okay. a, a statement that we use in Python to add something into a list. But also, I'll just do import num count, uh, and then I'll just say yes, like exactly. uh, counter. You're going to use the same way uh, that you have used in the previous program. Got it. Okay, quick, quickly do it. Numbers are to Okay, so I'll do this with names instead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first. So how many? Five? Mm, yes. Okay, so now after you just enter names equal uh auto cap. Okay, see, this is incorrect because here you are not going to you you are not going to enter the names. The user is going to input the names. You have to store them inside the the oh. array of names. Okay, okay, okay. Now now I got it. So it's gonna be then for loop. Oh, but wait, first I have to do output. How many names would you? like to enter see you uh, uh, it, it was already mentioned in the question that that the user is going to enter five names that is the reason that in in the first line you have written declare names one to five of string and again the declaration is incorrect Adam, wait, why the declaration is, it? is again incorrect how do we declare wait why Ah, I forgot to write array here. Yes, now it's fine. Okay, now go to the bottom here. So f f four. Counter. Output
So that's it, right? I just have to input it. No, you have to output all the names also. Oh, all the names. Okay. Okay, then I I was I thought correctly. Okay. Output. See, uh, you have written the number that is a sword is it's not a number. It's a name. Sorry. Yeah. I, I got confused between the name, the name that the sword is. Okay. Yes. Mm. That is, it, is, it is fine. However, as I told you earlier also that it's better to write uh, the name of the variable of the loop with the term next. Right. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so like this, counter one, counter, that's it? Uh, yes, it's fine now. Now I'm going to show you uh, uh, another thing that is related with the arrays. So just give me a minute. Okay. Okay, so this is what, now let's say, remember we can also perform operations like these on arrays. So let me move on to the next page. Okay, so I'm going to copy this part of the code. Okay, I've pasted it here. So basically, this is an array of numbers. I've I've taken uh, ten numbers as an input from the user. I have stored them in an array. So this is what we had previously studied. Now let's say I can also give the user an op uh, an opportunity to add any two numbers, three numbers, four numbers present inside the array. Let mm. me give you an example. Let's say uh, I'm going to write, I'm creating a variable. Uh, let's the first thing that I'm going to add the user is enter first location. Then I'm going to store it in a variable. I'm going to call it location one. Then I'm going to repeat the same thing. Okay, like this. And here I'm going to write location two and this will be second. Okay. Enter second location and lo input location two. Uh, now let's say if I want to add these two numbers together, the numbers present at these locations. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create a variable. Let's Let's call it uh, total or let's call it sum. So sum is equals to uh, num location one plus num uh, location two. Okay. So see that is mm -hmm. how you're going to add these numbers together. And the final thing will, uh, thing will be that you're going to print the output. I'm going to write uh, the sum uh, of numbers at these locations is a comma and the name of the variable, uh, which is sum, uh, like this. So that is how, uh, you can also perform an op a mathematical operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication on, or division on the numbers. Uh, that are present inside the array. Okay, mm. so uh, now tell me, is it clear? Um, yeah, it's still a little confusing to me, I think. Okay, tell me what, what is confusing you? Like the overall concept, like how, how it works. Overall concept of arrays? No, 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 this part. Okay. Still didn't understand how it works. Okay, so let, okay, let me explain it to you. So share your screen with me the one that you were uh, share your, your program number 23 with me i'm going to explain this again program number 23 that you have written in pseudo code uh number 24 23 
Oh, okay. Oh, so it's just that, except. Um, okay, so can I just see the sum part? Uh, just one more time. I just want to see how the sum part worked. I understood the location part. Okay, leave so leave this part location. of the program for a moment, and let's say, as a user, you want uh, number two to be printed on the screen. So what are you going to do? You are going to write uh, like this. You are going to ask the user. Uh, let's say you want to take the location from the user. So you are going to write enter a location. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the user is going to enter a location like this, input location. And then if you want to print the number at that location, you are going to write output the number at this location is. Then how are you going to print that number? You are going to write num here, which is the name of the array. And for the location, you are not going to write a number like seven, five, three, or something like that. You are simply going to write the name of this variable. So whatever mm. value which is which has been stored in this variable entered by the user, that is going to come here. And numbers stored at that location inside the array will be printed on the screen. First, tell me is is are these two statements clear? Yes. yes. So I am doing the yes. same thing here. Instead of asking a single location here, I have asked the user about two locations. First location, I have stored that location in lo location one variable. Then I inquired the user about the second location. I have stored that inside the variable location two. And now when I want to add, you, you have previously seen that if you want to print a number, you use uh, this statement, the name of the array mm -hmm. and then the location. So now one location is in this variable. Second location in, is in this variable. So how to sum them? I have written sum. Oh, and then the same thing you do with the divide sign, multiply sign, and subtract exactly. sign. Okay, not much. So sense. let's say if in the in the location one, let's say there is a value which is five. So it it's going to come like this. Then let's say in uh, location two you have a value which is three. So what will be the final value that will be stored in sum? That will is that will be eight. Right. Uh, okay, just give me a minute. So are you sure it's clear? Yeah, yeah, no, it's clear, no, it's clear. Okay, that's good. So basically that is how you are going to uh, store data inside the array and, and then you can perform different operations also on the data. So you have understood that uh, this, uh, that's, that's really good. So any other question related to these arrays? Uh, nope, no other questions, okay. sir.